Hello there, traveller. So good to see you again. You're always welcome here at Cryptid Central. So, how have you been? I hope all these stories of cryptids I keep telling you haven't been keeping you up at night. Pull up a pew, my friend, as I am once again in a talkative mood. Today, I shall be talking about a cryptid that has been the bane of the sailor's existence for millennia. I'm talking, of course, about the Sea Serpent. The Sea Serpent is a type of dragon sea monster which has been described in various mythologies, most notably Mesopotamian, Hebrew, and Ancient Greek. They are said to inhabit each of the world's oceans, meaning they can thrive in the coldest temperatures of the Arctic, as well as the warm waters of the Indian Ocean. They are typically of an enormous size, with eyewitness accounts describing them as being between 20 and 100 feet long, with a serpentine body and large, sharp scales, or sometimes a smooth, rubbery skin. Some say that the sea serpent has a mane of hair, or hair-like fins around its neck, or running along its back. They come in a variety of colours, including black, brown, green, grey and blue, suggesting a number of different species exist. Sightings of the sea serpent have been reported for hundreds of years, and are still reported to this day. Many maps from the medieval period and the Middle Ages show images of sea serpents swimming in the ocean or attacking ships. They are said to wrap their bodies around ships in a snake-like fashion, and then drag them down into the depths, sealing the fate of all on board. In general, they are said to swim in an undulating up-and-down motion, with a series of humps visible above the surface of the water. Recorded sea serpent sightings go back to the days of Aristotle, some of which were noted in his Historia Animalium. Within is a reference to an eyewitness account of a dead sea creature seen by the philosopher Poseidonius on the coast of the northern Levant at some point between 130 and 51 BC. Aristotle said, here, as reported by Poseidonius, was seen the fallen dragon, the corpse of which was about a plethrum in length, and so bulky that horsemen standing by it on either side could not see one another, and its jaws were large enough to admit a man on horseback, and each flake of its horny scales exceeded an oblong shield in length. Hans Egid, the national saint of Greenland, described the sea serpent in the 18th century, the record states that on July 6th, 1734, his ship was sailing along the coast of Greenland when suddenly his crew saw a most terrible creature, resembling nothing they saw before. The monster lifted its head so high that it seemed to be higher than the crow's nest on the main mast. The head was small and the body was short and wrinkled. The unknown creature was using giant fins which propelled it through the water. Later, the sailors saw its tail as well. The monster was longer than our whole ship. On the 6th of August, 1848, the captain of the HMS Dea Dallas and several members of his crew saw a giant sea serpent while sailing towards St. Helena, which was reported in the Times newspaper. They saw what they described as an enormous serpent between the Cape of Good Hope and St. Helena. It was said to have been swimming with around four feet of its head above the water, and they estimated that there was another 60 or so feet of the creature beneath the surface. The captain also said that it passed rapidly, but so close under our lee quarter, that had it been a man of my acquaintance, I should have easily recognized his features with the naked eye. Several crew members stated that it remained in view for around 20 minutes. Another officer wrote that the creature was more lizard-like than serpent. On the 14th of April, 1849, a report was published in the Illustrated London News of a sighting of a sea serpent off the Portuguese coast by HMS Plumper. On April 5th, 1885, the New York Times reported a sighting near San Francisco, in which steamboat passengers described a huge black monster that rose 10 feet above the water, with a mouth 4 feet wide displaying rows of sharply pointed teeth. Its tail, said to be 60 feet long, was seen as it plunged back down into the depths. In 1938, two fishermen by the names of Ernest Watson and William Harrington 
witnessed a sea serpent while trawling for Seoul, four miles east of South Wold, Suffolk, England. As they were returning to the harbour, they saw what they described as a huge, dark grey coloured animal, with a long neck that appeared around 40 yards away from them, travelling to around 30 knots and estimated at being between 50 and 60 feet long. In October of that year, Mr. Watson told the Daily Mirror newspaper, I have never seen anything like it in my life, and I've been nearly around the world. It kept its neck bent and showed its camel-like back which stuck out of the water so far that we could see right under it. It was dark grey in colour. I've heard all about people seeing such things as the Loch Ness Monster and I've laughed, but this was no laughing matter. In 1983, on Halloween, a sighting was reported by two construction workers repairing a section of California Highway from Stinson Beach, just north of San Francisco. It was described as being 100 feet long with a large, horse-like head. A passing truck driver who also witnessed the event claimed that the creature had two humps on its back and described it as looking similar to a giant eel. It was also reported that as it swam away, it was followed by around 100 sea birds who glided above the surface. Sea serpent sightings continue to be reported to this day from each corner of the world, with some gaining their own local nicknames. So is it not possible that the sea serpent could actually be an undiscovered yet very real species of marine life, seen many times by many people but never officially catalogued? How can the sea serpent be written off as a legend and nothing more, when it is readily admitted that we know less about our oceans than we know about the surface of Mars? Yes, the scientific community may scoff at the idea of the sea serpent, but that is the arrogance of man. If he hasn't seen it personally, then it must not exist. <laughs>